Success. There's just some like background squeaky. Yeah. I don't know what to. Well, that's probably what that's picking up. Test. Hello. Test. 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 That seems like it's a lot better. Here, let's do this. That's fine. Tap yours. We should turn this. Okay. Well, at least it's not acting quite as weird. Got sound, Joe? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> ah, that's some good Joe. Joe is some good Joe. Joe is some good Joe. Did Joe make the Joe? I made the Joe. You made the Joe? <laughs> is this like a, a what is it? A terrible Terry Tate's linebacker, office <laughs> linebacker. You kill the Joe, you make some O. Joe, not as good as the Joe downstairs. Connor's show is pretty good. Connor, Connor's show is pretty good. What oh, do you want the rotisserie light on? Rotisserie light. Uh, let's see if it messes up the saturation for the. 
the probably, camera. No. It probably will. Yeah, it's a little bit. I think if we if we roll up close enough. Yeah. I think we're good. Where is it? It's that one? Yeah. Okay, cool. We need one of those little red broadcast lights. It tells where to... We should have a weather map back here, too. Oh, I do need to draw something. I'm going to draw that circuit. Circuit? Yeah, which is just a parallel circuit. Okay, what's the silver processor? It's nice. Yes. No, no circle around it. No circle? No circle. There's a couple different ways you can draw the resistor symbol. Are you adding the LEDs in there or no? I mean... <laughs> Don't know if he's sort of accurate with like resistors until... Like, mm. infinite, like infinite resistors until they reach the threshold. Yes, and then they act like wires. <laughs> and then they act like wires. Um, Ideally. Do you know you can actually use diodes to do stuff like multiplication? Oh yeah. Uh, you can do that in Minecraft. You can do uh, which we call it. That's called mixing. What's the what's the LED symbol? I've never used that before. So uh, LED symbol. Like this is I'm gonna draw yours upside down. Okay. This is your battery. You would draw it like this. The direction that current's gonna flow. I mean, you could draw it the way you want it. But no, it has to be. It has to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> nah. It has to be right. Hold on. So it's resistor first, and then it is LED. What color is that first one? Red. Yeah. I'll even draw some photons coming off of it first. What's the second color? Uh, blue. Ooh. Tell me the last one's green. I wish. I think it's. I think it's purple. Uh, I don't have a purple marker. Hey, Joe, is there a purple marker over there? No, there isn't. Blimey. Well, we can find a green LED. No. No? <laughs> so this one's going to be... Actually, I don't know that. Next one's blue. To anyone watching out there right now, we're just doing some final checks and drawing pretty pictures and things like that. We'll be getting started shortly. We really do one too, where we, where we, we should, where we should also do. A, I mean, I know I can't remember who suggested it like a couple weekends ago, or to do a, like a solar cell phone charger. Oh yeah, that'd be really easy too. That's another one. I mean, and then all it takes is the motor. Um, but the only problem is that a lot of the solar panels come with. Uh, Bill Peck's audio needs a tiny boost. I gave it a little boost. A little kick. Boost. We're also kind of far back from it, so. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I want to make sure that that's off. Okay. It's also stereo. What do you mean? Because it's picking that up too. Microphone comes out on the left. This one comes out on the right. Ah, so it's like actually you're looking at. Well, kind of, except I'd be able to hear you both of you if I was sitting in front of you. Wait, which one's left and which one's right? Left, right. So if you're looking at us, that would be correct. Oh, very good. Okay. Yes, we planned that. Why would we hear Dr. Quiet? I mean, Dr. Vega. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you guys have to speak up as well? Can you speak yeah, I can. You cannot? I, I can. Okay. Uh, I'm, turning, I'm turning you up a little you're bit. Six, you're six years long right now. Yeah. Uh, again, those watching, we're just doing some final mic checks. We're going to get started very shortly here.
Um, and Science Family, last Friday, we actually did something very interesting in that we created a mask using a welder. And so here is the mask. We, we welded it. And what eventually we're going to be doing, which will tie into today's lesson quite readily, is we used a matrix, or we will be using a matrix for, uh, in place of a mouth, so that it'll create sort of like a mouth uh, LED, and then similarly with eyes as well. How are they going to see through that? Uh, it's going to be, the way that it's oriented, it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to work. Okay, you can see through those. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll make it look actually. See, it's fun now. Some color too. Yeah. Yeah. Some, more, okay. some more flare. Actually, red and green is very like Christmassy. Yeah. It's not Christmas time yet. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Right. All right. I think it's about time. Thanks. Thanks, science. Family. I think it's about time. Uh, I think it's about that time, yeah. Uh, hello. We're, uh, we are Tech Garden. Uh, I'm Connor. And I have a mouthful of coffee, <laughs> but I'm Albert. <laughs> um, and we are Tech Garden. We're going to be uh, doing some uh, Arduino stuff today. But before we get into that, we're going to um, talk a little bit about what Tech Garden is. Tech Garden is a project-oriented learning uh, place where we, uh, non-for-profit, where uh, Mask looks mildly evil. Uh, well, it's supposed <laughs> to be scary, definitely. Um, and so we do like to do a lot of project-based learning uh, here. And so we're just going to jump right into it. We're going to learn a little bit about Arduino today. So if you can see from oh, this canvas cut out, hold on. Um, we will be using an Arduino board to actually create a. Um, she do a can circuit another, type thing. Can you grab another Arduino for me? The one on the table. Yeah. One moment. Uh, Where cameras went. Thank you. There it is. There we go. Back in Sorry business. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. So what we're going to be doing is. chip right here with a certain task and you just run that task over and over and over again now that's that task can be turning on LEDs that task can be you know controlling the thermostat at home or it can be a couple different things but what we're doing right now is we're just showing how that you can turn on a couple of these pins and provide a voltage just like what we were talking about last week 
to use that voltage to turn on LEDs, and that's what Connor is going to show us today. Yeah, so we're going to jump into it. So right now, I have, uh, if you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, I have some code here that's written. Uh, and all I have it do is I say, okay, so this line here says that the 13th pin is uh, an output, which means that if I look on my Arduino board, the number 13 registers as uh, voltage. Um, one thing I will recommend is we go to whoever hasn't downloaded Arduino yet, because some of you haven't downloaded Arduino, uh, if you Google uh, Arduino or just go to arduino.cc, uh, you can download Arduino. And then two things that you want to do uh, right off the bat, I will show you. Um, uh, so as soon as you get into Arduino, you'll be prompted with this sort of screen that says void setup and void uh, loop. Don't worry about that for right now. Uh, you want to make sure that you plug in your Arduino into a USB port on your computer. And then you're going to make sure that we, so this type of board is an Uno board. So we're going to go to board Arduino genuine Uno and make sure that that's clicked. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the board that uh, this is on, which is currently uh, COM4. So it'll usually say COM, then a number, and then it'll say Arduino slash genuine Uno. Genuino Uno. Uh, right, so as soon as you've done uh, those things, and we will be uploading this project, this sketch file, to our website uh, as soon as we can, where, again, all of these uh, steps are outlined right here. Uh, for Mac users, it might be a little bit different, uh, but there is a uh, guide to for all three uh, operating systems uh, An, on their home. In other words, Mac users go get a PC. Right? Yeah. Uh, so if you have a Mac, go get a PC. If you have Linux, <laughs> good job. Um, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna do one quick uh, mic cycle here. One second. Sorry, one second. We need. I'm going to switch out the. Can you, can you grab this for me? Just hold it. Why are you doing that? Because there's too many that are plugged into this USB port. Uh. I remember that that used to happen before. So sound should be sound should be, that, huh? sound should be sound should be better. Sorry, sorry about that. We've been we've been testing out some some different here. setups. Let's try and see if it works. That works. It's blinking. Okay. And then the thumping should be gone, in theory. Um. And they can see everything. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So. Like I said, so as soon as you go through these processes, and again, uh, we'll be uploading this to our website so that you can download them as soon as it's available, and it has everything that you need to do this, this simple project, and I haven't even described the project yet, so all, all we're going to be doing is turning on an LED, but what that really means, okay, Connor, yeah, we're going to turn on an LED, that's great, I'm, I'm super glad that, uh, you know, we're sitting here on our Wednesdays for an hour and a half, and you're going to teach me how to turn on an LED. Well, it has I don't know how to do it, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a repercussion for this, and that is that it doesn't necessarily just turn on an LED. It's representative of literally anything you want it to be. It could be any sort of sensor. It could be any sort of logic-based algorithm. It could be, I don't know, 
something like a name tag that scrolls across a, a pane. And so what's what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to make this LED blink. So before before we do that, I'm going to oh, we're going to sort of clear the cache here and put nothing on the. Um, so for those board. of you who are watching this. When I was talking about microcontrollers or earlier and said you can program a task in there to run over and over and over, well, that task exists in that void loop function. Whatever you're going to write in there, it's going to be run always until you program it differently. So even without the USB plug uh, in there, if you can provide power to it, then once it starts up, it'll continue to run whatever you put in that loop function. That's right. So. The void loop function is, is pretty interesting. Uh, in, in This is a C-based program. And so if you think about something, if any of you have any uh, experience with something like Python, it's also considered something like a while true statement. So on, while something is uh, a true statement means that it will just continuously go back and forth and just keep running the same thing over and over again. Um, so right now, I've, I've uploaded my Uno, and currently it has absolutely nothing on it. I have it plugged in, but there's no voltage going anywhere uh, because the program doesn't have it written like that. Yeah, we haven't really told it to do anything at all. We told Actually, we specifically told it to do nothing. There you go. That is what we've told it to do. So we're going to do a couple of things. So I'm going to teach you one. I'm going to go ahead and just give you the answer right now, and I'm going to tell you that this is how you turn on an LED in something like Arduino. So the first thing we do is we say, OK, the 13th pin, which if you look is uh, on the right side of the board, uh, there's ground and then there's 13. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have this red wire is going into uh, port 8 and it'll go into a resistor. The resistor will then go into uh, uh, line 10. 10 will then go to ground and then or it'll go into the LED, then it'll go to ground. And then it'll come back to uh, to ground on the actual board itself. So remember, this thing pin thirteen is going to apply or supply a little bit of voltage in order for current to flow. The current has to go through the resistor, through the diode, and then back to the board. Right. So, and what this does is digital write thirteen high says okay, row voltage at pin thirteen. Delay says uh, wait. 1,000 milliseconds or one second, and then digital write 13 low says turn off, take away the voltage, and then again wait. Do you know what thousand. voltage it's applying? Do I know what it's applying? It should be five volts if I. There you go. Just to let you know that some of these actually don't supply five. Some of them do 3.3. This version happens to do five volts. So. Yes. Um. Yeah. I, wait, Uno's do five? Are you sure? Uno's do five. Okay. Um, it's the Due and That's what it was, yeah. uh, the M0 plus that does 3.3. Some of them are only like that. Yeah. So one of the only concerns is that in the last time you saw when we tried to put two diodes together, the voltage wasn't wasn't high enough to turn both diodes on. Yep. So if you're so using they were acting like like infinite resistors. Right. So if you are using a microcontroller that has 3.3 volt outputs, it might not turn on, say, a blue LED. Right. Um, and so as soon as we do this, so now we have, and the I should mention that the pin mode 13 will go in the void setup uh, section. So what, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to upload this to our microcontroller. And to do that, since we have all the tools set up before, uh, let's pull back up here for a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to hit this upload button. You, usually you want to save. Uh, what you've all, always done, and then you're going to hit the upload button. And it'll say compiling at the bottom. And as soon as it finishes compiling, you and, and the one thing you can know it's actually doing something, there's a little RX and TX light that are on the, the board that blink rapidly once you're actually uploading to it. And when that stops, your program's done uploading. Right. So we've successfully, successfully turned on one of the LEDs. Um, but I'm, I don't know. So when, when I was studying math, when I, you know, had my drive to be a mathematician, it was two parts. It was one, because I was really good at math, and two, because I was really lazy, okay? <laughs> uh, 
I like to do things, and when I say that I'm lazy, it's more like I just don't like wasting time on doing other things. You're being efficient. I, I like to, that's, that's the proper way to think. There we go. So when I look at this code, I think, okay, it does what I want it to do technically. It technically has, does what I want it to do. But instead of, okay, so hypothetically, I want to now do this process where I have it turn on, wait a second, turn off, wait a second, and then repeat again. But let's say I wanted to make it uh, blink in like arbitrary pattern. So I want it to blink for like three seconds on and then a quarter second off and then one second on and then one second off. And then I want to do this like a whole bunch of different times, a whole bunch of different arrays of doing that. So what I can do is I can just sit here and copy a whole bunch of lines like this and then I can change each of these delay parameters and I can do that, or I can do what's known as creating a function. So what I'm gonna do is I've already created a function that we're gonna use, and I'm gonna plug that in here and I'll explain. And again, to, to reiterate, all of these will be available in our, uh, on, on our website uh, as soon as possible. So what I've created is I've created this thing called blink LED. Oh, this shouldn't be in setup. What I've created this thing, this thing called Blink LED, and Blink LED is a function that takes three inputs. It takes the amount of time that it is turned on for, it takes the amount of time that it's turned off for, and then it takes which pin uh, is it is plugged into. So now, and then what it does is it does exactly what we've done here, except now we have variable inputs for how long something's turned on, how long it's turned off for, and which pin it's in. So now in my uh, code here, I can do something different. I'll put that down here. And so what we can do is we can do this. I can say, okay, blink LED, and I just want it to do the exact same thing, except I want it to only be on for one-fifth of a second, so 200 milliseconds. And again, this is pin 13. And whenever you're uh, coding in Arduino, you want to make sure that you always put semicolons at the end of your uh, outputs. And I think in theory this should work. All right. So now it's blinking at a slightly better rate, and now we know that we've done it right. So so now I, with this, I can do something like weird where I can be uh, doing this over and over again with various different inputs. So I'm gonna say, okay, so first it goes on for a thousand seconds, now it's off for uh, one fifth of a second, then it's only on for a fifth of a second and off for a second. And we can continue to do this in sort of arbitrary fashion uh, to just show that we, you can have variable inputs for all of these uh, functions. And notice one thing, Connor's written this in four lines of code, but if he had done it the other way, it would take 16 lines. It would take 16 lines, yeah. So if you're gonna do something over and over and over and over and over again, you might wanna consider writing into a function. It just helps keep things clean and simple. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Are those 5K resistors? They are... No, they are 100? Mm, 300? 200. 200. Thank you. For 200 ohm. 200. Yeah, 200 ohm resistance. Let's see, my son is using an RGB LED instead of three separate ones like yours. He would like to know what value of resistors you're using. Oh, yes, we're using the 200 resistors. Uh, great question, Science Family. Yes, the 200 uh, value resistors will be used, uh, available in our seat pack as well. Uh, you'll get 10 of them. So, so now that we have this, uh, we can upload it again. So now we should see it do a couple of different things. Yeah, now, it, now it's going to turn on for a second, turn off for a fifth of a second, turn on for a fifth of a second, turn off for a second, turn on for two seconds, and then turn off for half a second. And then repeat. And then repeat. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Yeah. So, so this is just, a, again, a very simplistic concept of utilizing functions. Again, whether it be laziness or efficiency, there's a fine line there, and I'm not, and I don't have anywhere near the philosophical degree to discuss that. Um, but it's it's definitely one of the most important things to learn 
when you're just doing, I'd say just generally coding, not even specifically Arduino, is yeah. creating function calls. So I've created this awesome function call. Well, now let's extend that a little bit to now instead of doing, you know, just one LED, let's add another two LEDs. And then I want to have them blink in succession. And again, we want them to be, you know, have one blink for three seconds, one blink for two seconds, things like that. Um, so I've drawn this, uh, this setup here, which hopefully you guys can see. Great. Okay. So uh, we've, I've drawn this here, which is just three uh, resistors and LEDs in parallel. Oh, great, yeah. So I've drawn three resistors here in parallel. So uh, resistor one and LED, resistor two and LED, and then resistor three. So this would be effectively, if this was a planet, this would be pin 13, this is pin 12, yep. this is pin, pin 11. 11. And all this is doing is this is pretty much showing that we are supplying a voltage to one of these, another one, or another LED through pin 13, pin 12, or pin 11. Yes. So uh, right now, as, as our code stands, we, don't, we actually don't have the ability to access pin 13, or I'm sorry, pin 11 or pin 12 again until we put in to say that pin mode 12 is an output. And then similarly, we want to say that pin 11 is also an output. One thing that Connor's putting in right now is the setup it's something that is run only once when the microcontroller is restarted. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just something that, it, again, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You set up these things once, you're done with it, and then you go onto the function that you're going to call over and over and over and over again. Because, again, if you're going through efficiency, you don't want to have your microcontroller constantly be saying, okay, this is, this is an output, this is an output, this is an output. You want to do it just once in the setup. Um, okay, so we've, we've established that all 11, 12, and 13 are uh, output pins, and I've already set it up here. Uh, so gray here is 12, yellow is uh, 11, and so what I've done is I've said, um, okay, uh, let's take yellow goes, so yellow is 11, it goes into the resistor, it goes into the green LED, and then it goes back to the ground, and then the ground hits the ground on the uh, Arduino. So it's following this circuit here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the uh, pin 12, which 12 will go into the resistor, then into the LED, then to the ground, and then the ground back into the uh, board. And again, that is just following this path here. Um, right, so thankfully, I've set up my function so that I can interact with variable pins as well. If I hadn't done that, then if I had said, you know, that it's always 13 here. But thankfully, I, I've set it up so that it's variable pins, so now I'm going to do something like this. So I'm going to say 11 turns on first, 12 turns on second, and then 13 turns on, and then we're going to take this last line. So I actually just wanted to turn on in succession, you know, one second on, one second on, one second on. Uh, well, one second on, one second off for each of them. So I'll do something like this. And finally, we should, uh, in theory, see it turn on succession. So it should be purple, wait a second, blue, wait a second, red. So I want to pose a question to the audience and see if uh, and see if everyone's smart enough for this. So I, I have another challenge. This time, I want to turn them all on in succession, except I want there to be, uh, it should turn from purple to blue to red with no time in between. So what input in my Blink LED program that I've, or function that I've just written should that look like? Uh, it can be something like, I don't know, it doesn't matter how long they turn on for, they can turn on, you know, the first one can turn on for like 400 seconds, and then the second one can be on for a quarter of a second, and then the third one can be on for like 16 seconds or something like that, but it should turn on in succession afterwards. So if anyone can think of what the actual input for that is, 
uh, they get all the internets. All, all the internet. That's all a lot. That's a lot out there. Yeah. Um, and, and I was looking at the some of the, especially from Science Family. I know that uh, you're, somebody was using a 220 ohm resistor. That's the yeah. the difference that between 200 and 220 is really not going to make much of a difference. The only time you'll start to see it really dim is if you get to over a thousand ohms or something like that. Um, so even if you have a 300 ohm or even a 500 ohm, you'll still see the LED plenty fun. Yeah, there will be there will reach a point where you're not pushing enough through to even turn on the LED though. Yeah. Um, so yes, if anyone has an answer to that, again, we just wanted to turn on in succession with no time in between uh, each of the blinks. So I'll give you I'll give you another 30 seconds on that or so. Um, but yeah, it's it's surprising. Again, to reiterate this is yeah, we're turning on LEDs, but what does what does that really entail with regards to future projects? Well, these LEDs symbolize the fact that we have access to applying voltage in a very algorithmic, logical way. And I think one of the things too to realize is that Connor's saying that we can apply a voltage or we can turn on a voltage, but that voltage could that could symbolize anything. It could symbolize a signal that says somebody has opened a window somewhere. I've determined that you you are having a break in. So you can use something like this as a mini home security system. Or Which we the, will be doing at some yeah. point. And I think one of the interesting things is like, I mean this is for future reference. In setup, Connor was defining a lot of these pins as outputs. But remember, we these are flexible. You can program these in many different ways. We can actually program them as inputs so it can receive information. So there's a lot of flexibility in this, and we're only touching one little bit today. Yes, this again, it's all it's all about the representation of it. So Science Family jumped jumped the gun and was able to do it uh, to turn it on in succession. Well, I I'd like to know how they did it. Science Family, if you could if you could explain your method in a few sentences or so, uh, I'd love to see how you did it. Um, the way I personally would have done it is all I would have done is just said, okay. Well, my blink LED has three inputs. It has time on, time off, and the pin. If I wanted to turn on in succession, I just want there to be no time between the, between the, uh, the times that they're on. So what that means is I want it to be on for a second and then off for zero seconds, and then go to the next one, on for a second, off for zero seconds. And in theory, this should work. It's a lot of theory. A lot of theory. A lot of theory. Boom, boom, boom. And then there it'll continue go. back and forth. And so this is something like a Christmas light, if you will. Yep. Uh, that we may or may not be doing. Yeah, at some point we, we in actually have, um, I don't know if it's on here. I think in your seed pack, let me see if I can find one. Uh, it was in here somewhere. These are, I don't know if you can see them very well addressable LEDs and each one of these LEDs actually has a red, blue, and green LED in one tiny little package. And you can send signals down the line so that you can have a little bit of a light show going on and we can show how how to talk to these. And it's actually a lot easier than you think because somebody has already gone through the painstaking process of creating a library which is similar to kind of what Connor did with this function. A library is just a package of a bunch of functions and a bunch of other useful things so that you can use something like this with just minimal inputs. Uh, Connor created one line to do to take up four lines of code. Yeah. Well, somebody's created a bunch of lines of codes and then you can have access to it um, through that. So um, again, it's convenient. It's a lot easier than you think. A lot of people out there, one of the reasons why we really like Arduino is because there's the community behind it is great. Uh, a piece of hardware comes out, something like like something th like this, and people are wanting to write tons of code or libraries for it. So yeah. you immediately get to be somewhat usable usable with this piece of equipment almost right off the bat. And and this whole concept of you know community oriented uh, programming, open like source, that is called open source, yeah. uh, as opposed to closed source, which is where you create a program and then you uh, outsource it to or you sell it out to people open source, everything's available on the internet. If you have any sort of problems with your Arduino, you you're, you're have everything set up, you're like, gosh, I just don't know why this isn't working. If you Google your problem, 
it'll probably show it up. It will show up. Yeah. It's it's actually fantastic. And, <laughs> and Arduino's website actually has some good tutorials and good references for yes. what do all of these functions that you're seeing on the computer do. Um, some great examples for Blink and for Beyond Blink. Yes. Um, using some of the equipment that we have in the seed pack, you can actually go much far beyond just turning on and off LEDs. Yes. Um, that was that was that was what I wanted to get done today. It actually awesome. worked out pretty well. Nothing caught fire. Nothing caught fire. I mean, streams, tech, streams, streams technically not over yet. I know. Um, but yes, and, and like I said, all of these all of these various uh, accoutrements that we have here, the breadboards, all the wires, the resistors, the LEDs, the board itself, uh, everything here is available in our seed pack. But likewise, you can also just look at our itemized list on our website, techgarden.org, and then you go to the live streaming section. Uh, you'll see the itemized list of everything that's in the uh, seed pack, and you can just purchase it yourself if you'd like. Uh, let's see. I know I did not. Oh, very good. Uh, yeah, science family, you should you should definitely let us know. Uh, I'm kind of. Oh, they did. Oh, it's right above it. Yeah, sorry. Nice. These digital inputs, delay, digital light. Oh, yes, that's exactly awesome. right. So, yeah, so they did the exact same thing that we did. Awesome. Except I told my I told the microcontroller to wait zero seconds. Right. They just well, so yes, that works as well. The same thing is when it says wait zero seconds, it just immediately goes to the next yeah. function that's in, or the next step that's on the, the next line that's in the code. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I said, there's a lot. Of, this is this is uh, this is such the ground level. Scratching the surface. Yeah. And scratch the Arduino. Yeah, if that. And um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be doing some some interesting stuff with it. Uh, you mentioned before that we were gonna be doing uh, a home security system. Uh, we're gonna try and do sort of like a laser fence type of thing. There you go. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. And again, all these things open source, and we're gonna we're gonna provide a lot of material for. It. We're gonna upload this uh, uh, file as soon as we can uh, onto our website. And yeah, it'll be it'll definitely be very interesting. If you're if you're watching this in the future, uh, and uh, which is now the present for them, I guess that's how time works. I think. Um, you can <laughs> sure um, time traveler. You can you can always uh, email us uh, or or Brad or send us a tweet or on Facebook or anything like that. Instagram, I think we even have, uh, mm -hmm. and you can uh, you can post us with questions. You can show us some of the interesting things that you've done. So I I was really liked how Science Family did it a completely different way than we did. Well, not completely, but they did it a little bit different than I did, and I love seeing you know how even just such a simplistic concept you can do in a variety of ways. I think I that's I think that's one thing. We have a we have a question from the audience, Joe Hall. Oh, sorry. Um, I, will that run when it's not plugged into the computer? Ooh, absolutely. Do you have batteries? Do we have six batteries? So all right, one second. That's a fantastic. One question. of the things that there we go. This could work. I got it. Oh, you got one? Okay. So, so one of the nice things about these microcontrollers is that when you upload something to it, it's permanently stored in the microcontroller. So if I take the power away from this and I plug in an alternate power source, it doesn't forget it. Yeah. Look, Ma, no wires. Look, Ma, Except no for wires. the ones that are flying, flying power. Look, Ma, no computer. Well, yeah. that's a computer. And one of the nice things is, I mean, a lot of the times you don't need it, but there's also a reset button that will turn it into to restart the program yeah. right off the bat. So this is actually kind of handy in case you want to build a robot. Yeah. Uh, robots that travel far from the computer don't work well when they're plugged into the computer still. Yeah. So you can have a battery pack. This can be the brains for your. Likewise, you can also just plug this in straight into like a wall using like a USB port. Yeah. Um, yeah, it knows it knows everything locally on the actual board itself, so you don't need to technically have it plugged into the computer all the time. Yeah. You do need to have it plugged in so that you can upload your file. Your these so each of these files are actually called INOs or sketches, sketches. Um, and so you, in in order to upload it, you will need to have this plugged directly into your computer, and then you can upload it. But after you've uploaded it, it's all there. Everything's there for you. All you need to do is supply power to it in any way you can. 
Um, whether that be through a solar pack, that would be cool. Uh, However you can get power to it. Battery yeah. pack, that's another option like you had mentioned. If this is plugged into like your cell phone charger, yeah. that isn't, that's not connected to the computer, but it's connected to power at the wall. Yeah, exactly. And we do supply a, uh, a battery pack in the C pack. Uh, this is just another random another one that we, yeah, that we have lying around. Um, I have another question. We have another question. Um, if, if so instead of using just the, I'm going to go over here because I'm asking questions. Okay. <laughs> so, Hello, everybody. It's Joe. Joe. It's Joe. Uh, I, I would this code work with anything uh, that's not LEDs? Like, can you hook up a li hook up a laser to this or uh, to something else and just and, and, and make it blink in the same way? Maybe. It. I mean, there actually is a laser that is in part that is in the seed pack. So as long as the laser takes five volts and it doesn't need a resistor. Or if you do need a resistor, you can always add it in there. Oh then yes. God, I'm kind of curious. Can you do that? We're gonna we're gonna try this out. We're gonna try it out. So there is there is a concern for um, there it is. You need to. Where is it? I don't know. There's a plus on it. So there is a little bit of a concern. We are providing a five volt uh, output from these pins. However, the amount of current that the Arduino sources from each pin is fairly limited. Um, in order to turn on an, uh, an LED, it's not that bad because LEDs only require maybe tens of milliamps. But doing anything higher power than that becomes problematic. Um, I think we, hold on, do we have any wires? Because we need to. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Here. Actually, yeah. You need a tin wire. That's uh, the one. That's the one too. This one might work. We will we will be showing how to hook up the laser in a more uh, uh, instructional video and in the future. It does turn on. Can you see the? Does it turn on? It does barely turn on. Oh, it on. does. What so if we took out the resistor? That's what I'm going to do yeah. next. We will be showing how to hook up the laser in a more... Oh, you did see it turn on there. there ah, is. very good. Yeah, so when we do this Mission Impossible-esque uh, uh, type of project, where we're going to literally be creating this bridge, or uh, uh, laser tripwire, and we're going to use the smoke machine so that you can actually see it um, and yeah, there it is. You can see the little. And dot. we will be showing how to how to turn that on uh, a little bit more effectively there. But right now, this was just sort of a question that popped up last minute, and I don't know. We love answering questions on the spot. And we're so. trying some things. Yeah. So yeah, just I mean, if you need something to turn on something that is 12 volts, then it really won't work because the Arduino is only putting out that. But there are ways around that, and I don't think we have anything in our setup. You need a, so you need, you need a relay, right? We, need, we do need a relay. And yeah. this is actually one of the things that kind of dovetails for what you were talking about earlier. It's like, say you want to turn on a lamp in your house. Well, the power that's coming out of the wall is 120 volts. Well, this isn't going to turn this on. What you can do is you can do something that's a relay. And all a relay is, is it's a coil that has a switch attached to it. And if you turn on the coil, it draws a switch to it and connects the circuit. So you might be able to turn on the coil with five volts, but then closing the switch allows you to tur to connect to the 120 volts that would be for your for your your light bulb. Right. So if you need something that is powered by like more that has more that needs more voltage than what the Arduino can supply or more current, then you typically use something like a relay, which says, okay, well if I can't supply the power, I'm going to provide the signal that will connect you to the correct power, and that's all really what the relay does. We do. We personally do not supply a relay. I don't think we do, don't but think? one of the nice things about Arduino is if you search for Arduino and name whatever, it probably exists on either Amazon through Arduino's website, oh, through yeah. other great websites like SparkFun or Ad Adafruit. Um, they're great for supplying tons of stuff that connect to these, and you can do so many different things: radios, um, lasers, security cameras. Security ca cameras. Uh, motors, um, you know, there's even 
um, they sell these things that go that fit perfectly to the top of the Arduino and they're called shields. There's even a shield that you can use to connect to cell phone towers and send data over a uh, cell phone. You, you do need a SIM card in order and a service to do that. Yeah. But imagine that you want to send data like in a remote location. If you have a battery, you can have that cell phone uh, shield on it and you can send back information. So the, the, the possibilities are pretty great. We have a, we have a, we have a third, sorry, we have a third question. question. Yeah. Uh, is there any other way to make these like blank uh, without like, using using a different using different code? So instead of doing it this way, is there any other way to do it? There there is a more fundamental way of doing it, um, but that's a little bit more for an advanced topic. Right. This this is definitely the easiest, easiest. Uh, yeah. and it's the most user friendly, most uh, documented, most documented. Yeah. Yes. So most open source uh, use. Um, yeah, and, and this just goes to show you that really the only thing that's holding you back is yourself with regards to these kind of yeah. things. And that's that's one thing that we're sort of trying to teach as well is that, yeah, we're dealing with, you know, voltage, and we're dealing with lasers, and we're dealing with LEDs, but as soon as you take away the fear of, you know, holy cow, I can't believe that I'm using this, you're now just, you know, manipulating logic. You're just using arguments to, to you know, manipulate electronics at your whim. And... At the end of the day, that's that's what we're trying to do. Is we're trying to sort of take away that fear of electronics, fear of technology. Yep. Um, Maker Shed, Creation Crate, Science Family. Those are some also really great yes. sites for it. Um, if you haven't been to Spark Fun, Spark Fun's a great one. They're out of Colorado, um, and they use. And the cool thing is that they have competitions too for people to build it. stuff. I think there was an autonomous robot, uh, autonomous driving one that they ha are holding during the summer. Hmm. Um, so they're, they're really involved in the community. They're really involved in making a lot of f things for Arduino. It's it's really cool. I, I can get lost in some of those places. <laughs> tweets, so be warned. Yes. I have to keep my credit card in <laughs> safe place. Yes. Um, and like I said, again, if you're, if you're watching this in the future or if you're watching it right now, again, that's how time works, uh, you can uh, email us or send us questions on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or anything like that, uh, things that you've already done. Um, things like this, and uh, yeah, we're we're really interested to see where this where this takes us because again, like I said, sky's the limit with this kind of thing. You we can pretty much create anything we want. I as I'll leave I'll leave a, just a, a little uh, flutter of information there is there's one thing that I've really wanted to do with this new Pokemon Go trend that I <laughs> that uh, is currently happening. So Pokemon Go is a, a game for your phone. And what you do is you swipe up to throw a Pokeball at a Pokemon, and you try and catch the Pokemon. Well, you can the way that you access how you swipe, you can access it on your Arduino. So what we could potentially do is make a Pokeball, a physical Pokeball that has an Arduino in it, and a couple of other sensors. And what you do is you throw the Pokeball at this Pokemon that you're looking through your camera, your phone with, and you can actually catch it that way. So you can be a Pokemon master in real life. I think somebody's already uh, somebody did that, right? Yeah, we're gonna make it a lot better though. Here's here's the video of somebody doing it. I'll post now. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, this is so this the video that's yeah. just posted in the uh, uh, in the chat here is the video of somebody using an Arduino to create a Pokemon ball that or a Pokeball, excuse me, that they used a physical Pokeball to. Uh, integrate with their cell phone, which yeah, I think is crazy. It, and, then, and like Connor mentioned earlier, it's it's using a little bit more equipment than what we have here, but it's the yeah. same principle. Same principle. Use um, other people's code or use libraries to help get you there. Start trying a couple things out, and then you have some results. Um, that's, that's everything for me. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this. I uh, do. Now we have a laser show. Yeah, now we have a laser show. Very <laughs> nice. Um, well, like I said, we'll be uploading this uh, file here uh, as soon as we can. Again, please do not stare at the laser. Don't stare at lasers. <laughs> it's bad for your eyes. Retinas burn out and whatnot. Um, we, will, uh, we will be uploading this as soon as possible. And, uh, yeah, email us with questions, comments. Yeah, uh, take a look at our website, techgarden.org. Feel free to donate. Um, again, one of the ways we do this is with a little bit of your support. Uh, we want to continue doing this. Um, I think... This Friday we do not have 
Because you're unavailable. Yes. So so this Friday, this uh-huh. this Friday we usually or on Fridays we usually have a sort of stream where we you know have fun with it and just sort of go go wild. Uh, this week we won't be, so we'll be continuing back up next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah. And where and I think next Friday, yeah, if everything goes all well, we'll be using some of these, the little neo, they're called neo pixels or addressable LEDs, to do something very similar to somebody had mentioned earlier, a little bit of Christmas light action. Um, so it'll be Christmas in August. Christmas in August. It's Christmas in August. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anything? Any other final remarks? I. I think that's it. So, if we don't have any more questions, additions, deletions, comments, any more, any more questions from the uh, audience? I, I have some questions. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. Gotcha. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, we hope to see you next Wednesday and build I'm, stuff. Yeah, build stuff. I'm Connor again. I'm Albert. And uh, I'm Joe. And, and Joe's. Who was Joe's, that again? That Joe's that back Joe. there. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, guys.